Hello, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome to the mini tablet demo today. Our topic today is automating analysis in mini tab. Uh, my name is Lily. I'm the mini tab technical trainer. Um, please make sure you have a computer audio system activated in your speaker turn up. And please write your question in the question panel at any time. So let me introduce the mini tab. Mini Tech 19 is the leading statistical software for quality improvement and statistic education worldwide. Thousands of distinguished organizations rely on Mini Tech powerful capability and ease of use, including America Express, Pfizer, Coca Cola, Microsoft, eBay, and IBM. The world trusts Mini Tech for quality. For more information on Mini Tech, welcome visit our website www.minitab.com. Minitab was original developed in 1972 at Pennsylvania State University. We built this software because we want to help the professor teach the statistics using computers. So students could focus on learning statistical concepts rather than on performing manual calculations. Minitab is an all-in-one statistical and graphical analysis software. After implement Minitab, this can help you reduce the waste, increase the profits, and raise the quality standard. Minitab is designed for statistical analysis and Minitab very user friendliness, uh, upper presentations, flexibility, and data analysis available. Uh, besides this, we also provide a free technical support. So let's say you face the uh, installation problem or you want to check how to run the certain function, welcome your email to us. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, probably, so sorry, let me start the, show the screen again. Okay, uh, let us continue. Uh, Minitech is designed for statistical analysis and Minitech is user friendliness. And uh, we also provide free technical support, uh, training, and also we do some mentoring project and automation project. So for more than 40 years, the company around the world trusts uh, Minitech and they come from the different industry, like from the production, manufacturing, automation, or chemical, uh, survey industry and so on. Uh, so I cannot put all the company logo here. Okay. Here are some company. So let's move to the Minitab macro. So today I use the latest version of Minitab 19. Okay, so this one Minitab 19, we have changed the Minitab layout. We change from single document interface to the multiple document interface. So it's slightly different with the previous versions. Okay. And the first row, this one is called manual bar. Okay. Manual bar is used to call the functions. I show the screen. Okay. So this one is, let's say, we want to open the new project or new worksheet, then we can go to the file new or open the data from Excel from other program, or open the existing project, we go to the file open. Then we choose save. And we do the analysis, use the step graph assistant. Okay, so normally we use these three functions to run the analysis. And if you want to customize the worksheet, then we can go to the data. Build the sampling plan, use the top. And the second row, this is called toolbar. Toolbar is a shortcut to call the command. So we can use this shortcut to call, uh, like open the project, uh, save, print, and so on. Navigator is used to save the output. So after we 
random analysis, all the output name will save in the navigator this portion. Uh, this is the output panel it's used to display the output. Uh, this is the worksheet. Okay. And there are a few ways to call the folder. Uh, we can go to the view. Okay. For example, I want to hide the navigator window. Okay. Just click and we can hide this. Or we can show the data only or other folder. Besides go to the view, we can go to the bottom, go to the status bar. Then some click the button can show or hide the navigator. Or we can change to the output only, or worksheet only, or can combine. Uh, so this one is the uh, general overview. Uh, next, another important point. Okay, a uh, mini touch is the column base. Okay, even we look at the pattern of the worksheet, it's look like Excel, uh, but Excel is a cell base. Mini touch is a column base. A uh, cell base is every time we do the analysis, you need to highlight the reading. Uh, for example, I want to find the average, find the mean. I must go to the one MD cell that equal formula bracket, highlight the values. Uh, but mean that is a column base, so we no need to highlight the values before we do the analysis. We just choose the column name. Then they will use all the reading in the column. Okay. And because mean that is a column base, you must make sure you save the data into column like the the, the timeline reason you must self into the column. Then we start do the analysis. Okay, this one is a uh, very important. Uh, when we do the macro, we must make sure the data in the proper format. Then we start to do the analysis. Okay. And next, this one the actually data format. The first one is called date time. Then we use the capital D to uh, represent the date time format. Numeric, we show the column ID only. Text, we use T. Okay. And if you have a missing values, uh, then we can press delete. The meter will replace the values to the missing. Uh, you show the asterisk uh, or show the missing text. Okay. So in the meter, there are few ways to plug in the data. You can key the data manually, or we can use copy and paste. So like go to Excel, highlight the data, copy and paste. Just right click, then you can paste the data. For another options, we can go to the file open. Okay, file open. Then we can get the data from Excel, from text file or other format. And third, we also can connect to the database use the ODBC. Then machine data source, then select the uh, data source name, then you click OK. Uh, if you cannot find the data source name from here, then we can press the new, uh, then we can insert the new database name. Uh, but this one requires IT's help. OK. So this one is a uh, general of uh, how to use the mini tab. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I I will uh, reply the question after I complete the uh, the intro. Okay. So this one we can open the data. So when we do the macro, most of the time, I will use, a, I will not key in the data manually or copy paste the data to the worksheet or manually. I will prefer use the file open, then we can choose the data, okay? Or uh, we can link to the database and then we collect the data. This one is uh, much uh, easier when we use the macro.
Okay, so meter is usually used uh, interactively, uh, which means each command carries out as soon as you click OK in the dialog box or enter it in the session window. Uh, for example, you want to build the control chart. So every time you need to call the dialog box, the fill in the dialog box, then you hit OK. Then you'll come out the control chart. And the macro, a meter macro is a set of the session commands stored in a file to automate the repetitive tasks such as uh, build the money reports or you want to extend the meter function such as you want to run a special test statistic. So in other words, you can write your macros uh, fit to your needs. And the mini tab provides three types of macro. Uh, the first one is called SE macro. The format is called MTB. It's the simplest macro in the mini tab. They can run a series of commands uh, in the mini tab. However, however, the SE macro cannot include the control statement. Control statement like if, else, do look, well look. Uh, this one cannot uh, put in the XC macro. Second type of macro is called global macros. The file extension is the MSC. Uh, also, it's a simple macro, and this can work with the global or we call active worksheet. So it means your current worksheet. And the, another benefit of use of global macro is that can include the control statements. Uh, so the global macro is uh, more power than the SC macro. The last one is called local macros. The file extension is .msc. Okay. And this is the most powerful and flexible, but the most complex and hard to write. And this macro can work with the global or we call active worksheet and also the local worksheet. A local worksheet is the visual worksheet. So this worksheet uh, run when you call the local macro and it's delete when the macro is finished running. So only the macro can see or adjust, manipulate the variable in the worksheet. So that's why the worksheet is say uh, local. And because they can work with the local worksheet, uh, so this local macro is the most, most powerful and flexible. Okay, in today's sessions, I I can't I can't complete all the all types of macro. I will introduce is the simplest one. It's called Axie macro. So first part, I will show how to obtain the session commands. So there are three ways. Uh, first one is you run the analysis in Minitab one time. Then we go to the history folder to copy the session commands. Second, well, we can go to the mini that help website, then we can get the command from there. And third, after we edit the graph, well, we can double click the graph and copy the command language. And after this, I will show how to run the session command. Uh, first one is we can fill in the session command in the command line dialog box. Uh, another option, we can save the session macro into the macro file. Okay, so now I show the example. Okay, so for example, in this case, I save the data to the mini that worksheet. And um, I have three suppliers, supplier one, two, three. And Every time I choose the uh, five samples. So in this case, I want to run the S bar L chart. Uh, S bar L chart is uh, one of the control chart. And before we do these portions, uh, we want to set up our machines. So we can go to the file options. We can go to the file options to set the default file locations. So we go to the here, choose the dot dot dot, choose the browse button, then we can select the folder. Then we click OK. 
and then we can come back to here also we can change uh, for example if it's easier i choose desktop And after this, we can uh, choose the English. Yeah. Okay. So this one is the first step. Uh, we want to set the default file location. So I redo. So we can go to the file options. Okay, file options. Then after this, we click this to set the default file locations. And then And then we go to the macro locations. Then we click OK. And after this, we can restart the machines. Okay. And can start. OK. So now I go to the, for example, for demo sessions, I copy the data for next. So, Okay, so first I want to run, I want to get the session command. So we can go to the view, click show command line or history. Okay, I repeat. So click view, command line or history. After I press this, then they will show the dialog box here. Okay, so after this, I want to get the session command. The easiest way is we run the analysis one time. So we go to the set control chart variable chart for subgroup and choose S file out and fill in the dialog box supply one subgroup size five. Okay. So after I run the analysis, oh, then there will come out the S file chart and the history will show the session command. Okay. So this session command, uh, we if you want to rerun this control chart, so we can copy and put here, input in the command line, or the, then click run. Uh, then they can generate another control chart. Okay, similar control chart. Okay, so this one is called session command. And uh, besides copy paste, definitely the user can key in the session command manually. Okay. And this session command we only read the first four characters. So it's uh, X L C H. We only read these four characters. Okay. So let's say I copy this by D15 stop. I still able to run the control job without go to the dialog box. Okay. And this session command uh, is not case sensitive, so you can use the uppercase or lowercase or combinations. And next, this one is the color name. Okay, color name. And when we use the macro, most of the time I prefer use the colon ID. Okay, colon ID. But let's say you want to use the column name, then normally I will put the single code. Okay. okay, so this one is the session command. And sometimes the session command, they will provide the sub command. I'll show one example. So I go back to the S bar out chart. So let's say I rename this, rename the title. Okay. So now we can look at the session command. Uh, that will provide the or copy I copy to other place you can see clearly. Uh, 
Okay, so this one is the main command. And the second line, this is the section subcommand. So many commands that have a subcommand, so they can further define how the main command should be carried out. And we will end the main command with the semicolon and end the last command uh, with the full stop. Uh, this portion is uh, very important. Let's say I put the wrong notation, letter that will come out of the box. Then we cannot run this macro. Okay. So this one is the how we get the data, how we get the session command for the history folder. Uh, beside this, we also can go to the help website. You can go to the help. After we press the help, then we will jump to the Minitab website. Then we can go to the macro help. So after we press this, they will download the Minitab macros help folder. So you can read these information uh, offline. Okay. And third, uh, for example, like this case, I want to edit the graph. I want to edit the color of the points. So this one is slightly different with the old versions. You need to double click. Okay, double click the graph to enlarge this. Then we click the points, then choose custom. For example, I change to green. Okay. Then we press OK. Okay, after we press OK, So we press OK, then you can see a very obvious I change the color of the points. Uh, but this session command, the change color command are not recorded in the history folder. So if you want to copy these portions, uh, you need to double click the graph again. Then go to the top right icon. Use the copy command language. Then copy. Then come to the command line, then replace it. Okay. Try again. Copy. Okay. So let me try. Open the map. Suppose, suppose it will show here. Okay, let me try again. Okay. Sorry, something wrong. Okay, so we probably we continue. Okay, so this one is uh, how we copy the command. Okay, next I show how to run the macro. Uh, first I show how to uh, use the session command and also use the command line dialog box just now. So now I show how to run the Axie macro. Okay, so I use a new example. So first I get the data from Excel. Okay, double check. Let's say I don't want to include, uh, I want to include, oh, okay. So after I open the worksheet, well, they will record the command in the history folder. And after this, I run the control chart Then press this button. At the last dialog box, go back to the previous macro or previous dialog box. Okay. 
Okay, so very simple. So in this case, I run the control chart for the three suppliers, supplier one, two, three. Uh, so I want to get the session command, so I must go back to here, go back to the dialog box, I'll fill in, then click OK, then they will show the session command in the history folder. So now I want to save this macro in the macro folder. Save into the Xing macro. So we can control A, select O, and right click, save history as. Okay, save history as. Then I choose the locations format. Um, we try the XE, XEC, this format. And type the name. That's it. Okay, so we have recorded this macro in the Axif file. So now I want to execute this function. So I open the new project. Okay, so now I want to execute this macro. So I go to the file, run and exit. Okay, find the next and select file. Then open. So very fast, uh, we can get the result within the seconds. Okay, so I will do. So it's go to the file run and next. Okay, file run and next. Then we select file. Then it will directly generate the three control chart. Okay, so now I show how another way to execute this macro. For example, this file is my file. Okay, so we can right click, open with, then we change the default file locations. So just right click the MTB file, the XE file. Then we choose other apps. Let's choose the more apps. Save in here. Then we choose NTB. After you set the default file program, then in future you just double click. Uh, then you will directly open the mini tab. Uh, then you can run this. Okay. Oh, this one is the previous versions. Okay, uh, so this one is uh, how we uh, execute the macro. Uh, next, I show how to edit this macro. We can open with Notepad. Okay, so if you say you want to edit the macro, uh, we can open with the Notepad. And this Notepad will show the report. The first one is the open Excel file. Okay, open Excel file. And here will show the location of the Excel file, or we call path. And let's say you want to change the file locations. For example, one day I move the Excel file to other locations. Uh, so you must uh, update the address. Okay. So just click the folder, press, then you come out the link. Then you can copy the link and replace here. Or you change the name of the worksheet, then you also can, uh, you also need to update. Okay. And the below here, they will show the control chart. Okay, so uh, probably I'll show one example. I change to put two. Okay, then I change the values here. Then we save it. OK. 
okay so after i change the name then i can go back to the just now like this and i update the group two and save it so uh this one is a uh, very important i show you your file locations and the name is correct then we'll go to the right worksheet to collect the data points then we come back to here. I execute the macro. Okay, so you can see a very obvious. I use the latest points to run the analysis. So in this case, the user can save a lot of time to prepare the reports. Okay. Uh, so this one is the first one is the file locations, okay, file locations. Uh, another one is another common problem is sometimes we run the analysis, it will show the bugs, okay, it will show the bugs. Uh, for example, this one, I uh, I forget to change the full stop. So let me that run the analysis until here, or oh, they will detect this one, this session command is incomplete and then they will come out the box. Okay, so this one is a common mistake. And sometimes we detect the show the box, but the box does not does not show um many information. So in this case uh, we will recommend the user redo the analysis again, uh, make sure the macro is perfect, then we save as the macro file. This one is the uh, easiest way. Okay, uh, unless the user still remember which portion they run wrongly, then they can go to that portion to edit. Okay, uh, another is the limitation of the mini tab. Uh, for example, okay, for example, like this case, I only have one values, but I want to use these one values to run the control chart. Okay, I want to run the IML chart use the one reading. Then okay. Oh, they will come out the arrows. Okay, so this this one we need to try the me that or before we run the map group because sometimes uh is the data problem or this limitation of the mini tab. For example, like this case, we have one value. Uh, we cannot use the one value to run the IML chart. Okay. So, so this one also is a common, common mistake. Okay, so just now I mentioned that uh, we can use the this notepad to edit the macro. And um, beside this, uh, we also can use the task scheduler. Oh, sorry, can you use the Notepad Plus? We can use this program to edit the macro. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, another free software in the market, uh, but we don't recommend to use the Microsoft Word uh, because Word file they will change the notation of the uh, command. So we in, we will not try the Microsoft Word. Okay, so this one is uh, how we uh, run the code. And next, I show how to link the macro to the task scheduler. Okay, so sometimes some users, they want to use the other program to execute the mini tab macro, uh, then it's possible. You can use the Visual Backseat or C Sharp or Task Scheduler or other program to execute the mini tab macro. Or the, today I show is the easier one is called Task Scheduler. Uh, this is the Microsoft product. Okay, so now I show how to do this. Uh, you can go to the action box, uh, create the basic task. Okay. 
then we can fill in the name. Next. And I want to, for demo, I choose daily and choose the previous day and choose the time. Next. Then start the program. And then next. So this one before we choose the start program, make sure you have changed the default program to mini that on MTB. Then after this, we choose start program uh, next and select the file. Then click next and finish. So every day, once we reach the time, this task circular will execute the mini that macro MTB. And then this MTB file will execute get the data for Excel and run the analysis. Okay. So then later we'll get the tree control chart. So we'll just make sure we update the data in the Excel or before uh, this particular time. Then once we reach the time, the task scheduler will execute all the information and run the analysis. Okay, so this one is the task scheduler. Okay, so uh, now I show another program. Okay, busy reporting system. Okay, some custom, some of our customers, they, they have uh, a lot of data in their database and they need to build a lot of the analysis per day. So our company helped them to run the, to write the program, to execute the data for database and help them to generate the reports. Okay, so I spent the background of this, um, this customer that save their data into the database. And there are three types of database. One is for incoming, second is for in process, and third for outgoing. So, Every day, so our, our system will go to the database, collect the latest points, and arrange the data properly and store it. So once they reach the times, then our system will go to the database, collect the data, run analysis, and prepare the reports. So if they have one point out of the spec or is lower than the CPK values or PPK values, then they will send a trigger email to the particular user. Okay, so now I show the samples. Okay, so uh, all the information we store into the website so the user can view the result anytime in way. Okay, so first we'll show the dashboard, uh, show the summary. This customer, there are three databases, so they'll provide the tree of chart. Uh, another one is a combine everything. Okay. Then we can go to the admin to set out the system. Uh, for example, staff manager. Uh, so this one is used to set uh, who is the admin and who is a normal user. Uh, I mean, they can edit anything in this system, but the normal user, sorry, to reach the time, okay. So the normal user that only can uh, view the result. Okay, spec setting manager, this one is used to set the spec limit. Uh, by default, the use, uh, we will collect the spec limit from the system. Uh, but sometimes some 
uh, process that will change the spec limit uh, probably after the three months. So in this case, they can fill in the spec limit in the uh, this spec setting manager. So later we will uh, refer to this one and compare with this spec limit. The test row setting. So this customer, they only want to display the IML chart. So we'll control with this, uh, this rules. Uh, we can set the rules uh, based on their requirements. Okay. And schedule manager is uh, when we run the system. Trigger setting manager is uh, who will get the trigger email because uh, if one points out of the spec limit, I don't want to send the report to whole world. Okay, so in this case, I want to send the notification email to the particular user. So we can go to here to set up. Okay. And after this, we can go to the report. Okay. So the dashboard, outgoing report, incoming, in process. So for example, we go to outgoing. Then we can filter by date. For example. So in this case, they will come out all the summary, all the chart uh, are here. Uh, so the user can uh, skip the step to run the mini deck. And here will also provide the status is pass or fill. Uh, red color is fill, uh, green is pass. So if filled, then they will show the information of which point fill the test, uh, what's the batch numbers and other informations. And you can click the project files to get the data and do the further study. Okay. And let's say the user want to prepare the reports. For example, uh, they want to prepare the outgoing report. So just click print chart. I show this tree and okay. Uh, then we will direct get the outgoing reports. So it's like the popular system, or we can direct send this report to the customer. So we save a lot of time uh, to do this portion. Okay, so let's say the user want to do some further study. For example, the auditor come to audit and they want to get the History data. So we also can go to the tools, uh, search the outgoing uh, raw data, and we just fill in the part numbers, uh, batch, or other information that range. Then they will record all the history data. So uh, we can save a lot of time to trigger the problem. And the last, this one, the user will can get the email notification like this. This one is uh, one of the samples. They will list out the source items, parameters, and the test result. And list out the details of which test, the field, which kind of test, and also the other information like the batch number and so on. Okay. And we also, this one will not uh, send the full report to the user because the size is very right, huge. Uh, but we will provide a link. The user just press a link that can go back to the particular uh, project. And this one is uh, another project is the, the customer request the dashboard. Okay, so here will show the status. Uh, that I show the status is like uh, within control limit or out of spec or out of control limit. Okay, uh, so the user can uh, refer to this. So this one can help the user save a lot of time when to do the analysis. Okay. Okay, so the last portions I show the also show the new features of the mini tech nineteen point twenty twenty point one. Okay, so this new version allows the user to execute the external Python script. They use the optional mini variables as the inputs. 
and result are returned to me that and display in the output navigator and output panels. Uh, but when you want to use the Python integrations, you must make sure you install the MeTech 19.2020.1 64-bit or higher. Or, and also install the Python 3.6.1 or higher. Okay. Uh, so now I show the example in the help. You also can get this from the help website. Okay, so I download the example for help. So in this case, I want to run the Python script. Okay, and I also have here this example. Okay, this this one there are some Python script. Okay, I'll open the new example. Okay, so now I direct go to the command line. Okay, so now I want to run this Python script. Okay, fine. Oh, sorry, I haven't changed the file location. Okay, so uh, now I want to import the text uh, to this picture. Okay, uh, in this case, I so I use the Python uh, to run analysis. After this, I send the output to the mini tab, uh, so they will look like this. Okay, so Python uh, software uh, now is also very common in the market. Uh, so now we link these two together. Okay, so now we left 10 minutes. I go to the Q&A. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to type in the chat room. Okay. Okay. Thank, thanks for your questions. Uh, I can. Uh, we can share the PowerPoint to the user, and also provide the one example. Uh, one examples. Example macro. Uh, besides send the PowerPoint to the participant who joined the web demo today, I also will share the one examples macro. Uh, you can try this after the today sessions, but uh, be careful. After you copy the Excel file and the macro file to your PC, uh, make sure you change the file location uh, because different DC uh, they have different file location. Then, so you must uh, update this, then you save and you can execute the macro. Okay, uh, another question about the mini tab format. Okay, so if you want to test, you can go to the file open. Uh, then you can try the different format like MSC, uh, Excel, or common text file, I think should be no problem. Uh, if 
two cannot, then you probably you can try ODBC. Okay, ODBC machine data source, then you can create the new uh, this one need admin password I have next. Uh, then you can create the new uh, new from here. Okay. Um, because sometimes uh, customer job with us because for example their IT or other source help them to generate the new project or new uh, software. Uh, but some sometimes uh, our mini that cannot direct get the data from their program. So in this case, uh, probably the user still need to convert the data to Excel or CSV file, some common file uh, before uh, they input the mini deck. I hope I answer your questions. Okay, uh, another question is uh, how we get the double SSS on the control chart. Okay, I show example. Oh, sorry, what's this? Uh, let me open the macro faster. Okay, so if you want to include the other other uh, labels, uh, then you must set the information to your to your worksheet. Okay, so for example, like this case, I have the subgroup and the date. Uh, then I want to include this information to my control chart. So we can go through the SPR. Okay. Then we can click the label. Double click and launch the graph and click on the label. Stem, time, stem, subgroup, date. Okay. And then they will show the information. Then you can redo. So we double click and launch the chart. Then we go to the X axis level, double click, go to the time date and choose them. Uh, but this one, they only can accept uh, three variables, okay, three columns only. Okay, so after a fresh okay, and then they will come out the labels below. So sometimes I, because I have a lot of information in one chart, so probably it's not very clear. So probably I can build the SPAL chart separately. So it means SPAL one chart out in another layout. Uh, so we can go to the control chart, then you can uh, run the SPAL chart separately. Uh, this one is, I will do like this. Then after this, you can click copy command. Uh, let me try again, is it still work? Okay. Copy. 
Ah, now it's okay. So it's not copied to here, it's copied to a notepad. So because after I edit, because after I edit the the label, it will the session command will not show in the history folder. So you want to copy these portions, you enlarge the graph, then click copy command language, then open the notepad, then you paste it. And after this, you can put this portion to your Excel macro. Just copy and paste. Uh, but remember, if you direct copy to the notepad, uh, later you set the format, uh, you want to change to the old file, then you can type like uh, a, 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 B, C, dot M, T, D. Uh, you must save in this format manually. Okay, thanks, Q. Um, so, okay, so later I will, well, we will send the information uh, the, and the slide to the user who joined the watch demo today. And so if no more question, then probably we will stop here. So for more information on Minitech 19, or uh, welcome visit our website www.minitech.com or www.business.com or you can contact us use the email below. Okay, so thanks, thanks for your attention and stay healthy.